Hey guys, Brianna here. I hope you had a wonderful Christmas. Um, so I'm going to be filming and uploading quite a few videos just to wrap in and bring in the new year. Um, so first, and I have a list on my phone, I wanted to start with all the books I really loved um, that I read. I read 70 books this year. My goal was 50. I've never kept track of how many books I've read before and I just, I still can't believe that I have finished 70 books, whether that was physical books, Kindle books, or audiobooks. Um, so, it was going to be a top five favorite books of the year, books I enjoyed, but I just couldn't stop at that. So this list is quite long, and some I lumped together by author, some I lumped together by themes, and so we are just going to get started. Um, I do not have all the books with me to show you, and it's just too long of a list that I just didn't want to pull them all out. Um, if you follow me on Goodreads, um, or and I'm going to make sure I have the author so you can look them up yourself. So, yeah. Um, and I'll let you know if I've done reviews or if I've wrote videos on these. Okay, so let's get started. So first, I lumped a couple books together under Queer Reads. Um, so there was Aristotle and Dante Discover the Secrets of the Universe. Amazing, a young adult queer um, book. Super good. That's by Benjamin Alire Sainz. It's about Mexican-Americans, which is even cooler um, on the diversity level. Next, we have Captive Prince by C.S. Picot. Um, the third book in the trilogy, trilogy will be arriving at my door in February, and I'm so excited. Um, finally, under Query, I have Luck in the Shadows by Lynn Flu Fluiling, um, and this is part of a series. Um, I stopped reading the series. I'm not, I realize I'm not a fan of super huge long series, um, but I gave the first and second book five stars. It's, it is a great storyline, so if you're into fantasy, I would recommend that entire series to you, especially if you do enjoy series, um, but it was great. Second category is Stephen King slash Richard Bachman. I've talked a lot about his books. Um, all the books that I'm mentioning here I have videos on. So we have The Green Mile, which is under Stephen King, and The Long Walk, and Thinner, which are both under Richard Bachman, his old pseudonym. Um, great books, all non-supernatural books. I've talked a lot about how Stephen King's non-supernatural stuff like No Ghosts, No Vampires, I think are some of his best works, so check those out. Um, and I give all those books five stars, I'm pretty sure. Third, Gillian Flynn. I have read all the books in her novels. She recently came out with a short story, um, or a very tiny story, um, but I discovered that she is a very brilliant author, so she wrote Gone Girl, Dark Places, and Sharp Objects. And she does psychological thrillers, and she's just very unique in the stuff that she talks about, and the psychological elements she talks about. The most recent one, I finished Sharp Objects, has psychological elements in there that I don't think I've read about, ever maybe, in a fiction book. So that was really cool and interesting. She goes outside the box, and she doesn't repeat or overlap the themes she talks about. Very smart writing. So, I wanted to mention her. Four, I have some nonfiction that I loved this year, so we have The Devil in the White City by Eric Larson. It's about the first serial killer and the city fair in Chicago, um, and how he used the fair to cover up that he was killing people. <laughs> it's great. Um, it's so, so good, um, this book, and they're making a movie out of it starring Leonardo DiCaprio, who is amazing. So, awesome stuff. Um, more nonfiction. We have Freakonomics by Stephen Le Levitt and Stephen Dubner. Super great. I want to make sure I read the next books in the series. It's a great, fun way to look at economics with funny stories and tales of human error, how we assume things, we assume that things are correlated, and how they're actually caused by other things. And it was just a very entertaining book. Um, we also have Jekyll on Trial, which was a book I read about multiple personality disorder and the law which was written so good and so well researched and really covered all the questions that it should be asked about it. Um, that's by Ellen Sachs, so give that a try if you're interested in that. We have The Professor and the Madman by Simon Winchester, <coughs> which is about murder in the Oxford Dictionary and how it came to be about, but it's so fascinating, so fun, and so well written that I, it was one of my favorite nonfiction books this year. And I know you would think it, that's boring, like Oxford Dictionary, but there's murder, there's madness involved. It's just a brilliant story, very good story. We have Inside the Criminal Mind by Stanton Same Now, which I talked about. It was also featured in my top ten influential books, um, which is about criminals. And maybe the, there's perhaps a better way, he proposes a better way to go about um, treating criminals or helping them so that they won't reoffend. 
so that they won't want to reoffend too. Okay, so those are all the nonfiction books. Um, going back to fiction, we have Pilcrow by Adam Mose Jones, which is set um, a while ago in the 40s, some, somewhere where um, vi the virus was going around for like, um, not whole, but anyways, it's one where like you can't move and your limbs lock, and he ends up catching it, and he spends the of his life going into the special schools and stuff like this, and it just follows him from there to then, and it's just super fascinating. Um, he ends up being queer, or uh, specifically gay, which is just something that's just thrown in there as he grows up and gets crushes and stuff, and it's really cool because, um, it's just great. It's one of those stories that you can sit down and pick up and read and go back to, and I really want the sequel, but they don't have it yet in the edition that I want. But I really want to continue the story with the main character, just a great fiction read about a character and his life and his growing and with his special circumstance that his limbs are all <laughs> locked into place. Uh, pretty much. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, we have The Woman in White by Wilkie Collins. Um, a old mystery, um, a classic. I loved it. I really want to read his other stuff, especially The Moonstone, which is considered the first, like, detective story. Um, you know, um, really loved that. Very good. We have, it's told, it's an epistolary story, so it's told via letters, again, if I'm not remembering incorrectly, um, and just done really well. We have The Monk by Matthew Lewis. Um, so good, very old story about a monk who's never been outside the monastery. He's like an orphan, and he's great. And then this woman comes along and sneaks into the monastery and falls in love with him, and once he decides to, um, you know, be her lover, things just go downhill from there because he's not used to temptation. And then things get crazier than there. Uh, very good, very good. Um, we have The Marriage Plot by Jeffrey Eugenides. I've talked about, I did a book review on this, um, so feel free to check that out. But that is my second favorite out of the Jeffrey Eugenides trilogy. Um, just to recap, I hated The Virgin Suicides, loved Middle Sex, and I loved The Marriage Plot. So check out that video if you want. We have The Collector by, Je by John Fowles super creepy, and I heard about this book when I was watching a documentary on these serial killers, and it turns out one of them was heavily inspired by this book. Um, a British man wins the polls, which is the equivalent of the lottery here in America, and he decides to build a house and finally give into his fantasy of capturing this girl he's obsessed with and keeping her in the basement. He's a butterfly collector, and what's very, very scary about this book is he doesn't want sex, he doesn't want anything that she could possibly give him to help her escape. He just likes watching her and watching the process and having her under his wing like she's a butterfly. Um, very good writing. It's told, half is told from his perspective, the other half from hers. Very chilling, very scary. I was scared for like three days after I read this book. But one of the best books of this year that I've read. Very horrific. Check it out. <laughs> We have A Simple Story by Elizabeth Inkwald. I don't even really remember what this is about. It's a simple story about, like, love, marriage. It's one of those old classics, but I just loved it so much. So much. So please check that out. We have, and then finally, we have two more. Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte and Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte. Sorry, we have three more. And then finally, um, we need to talk about Kevin by Lionel Shriver. Great book. Great movie. Even better movie, I think. Um, great casting in that movie. But... Those are, so that was at least 20 bucks I just listed out of the 70 I finished this year. Please, please, please check them out. They, I just really enjoyed all these books. I either gave them four or five stars to all of these, and when I was going through the list of books I finished this year, these were just ones that I was like, I want to mention that one. I want to mention that one. I need to mention this one. Um, so yeah, um, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I'm looking forward to the new year. I'm going to post my you know, goals for the new year and stuff like that. Um, let me know if you read any of these, if you liked them, or if you didn't like them. And I hope you guys have a great new year, and I will see you next time.